Devil in Ohio, Ending Explained. This latest Netflix series was a thriller that delved into the lives of an ordinary family who encountered a girl that escaped a satanic cult and became the very thing that took over their lives and made them the targets of the Dodd family that had been part of that cult for many years. So with this, I thought I'd recap, break down, and explain all that there was to take away from the limited series that was something a little bit different. So let's get into it. Here is Devil in Ohio, Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. This series started off with us seeing the escape of Mae Dodd from Amon County, where she originally lived with her family. Where following her escape, we saw how she came to be intertwined with the Mathis family household. Dr. Suzanne Mathis worked at the hospital where Mae was admitted, and we saw immediately that they struck up a connection that would prove to be detrimental and a lot closer to home as the series got underway. A connection based on seeing the trauma that a family can have on an individual, which was first-hand experience for Suzanne. She saw herself in May, and that is why she was so invested in trying to save her. She felt abandoned by her mother when she was younger, when she was with her abusive stepfather, and she held onto that pain for her entire life. We saw at first that May was reluctant to speak and was extremely detached from the real world outside of the town that she lived in due to the fact that the life that she led was completely different to many others out there, in the sense that she lived a life by the teachings of a religion that worshipped Lucifer, and believed that if a sacrifice is not given, then it will bring famine and hard times to the family. Hence the saying, the chain will not be broken. However, we saw that the chain was broken when May ran away. As the show went on, we found out that May was in fact supposed to be the sacrifice that was intended to happen, so that the family wouldn't suffer any harshness from Lucifer. This is why she had the pentagram engraved on her back. She was considered to be the chosen one who was to marry the prophet. This was no marriage in the traditional sense though. This was a marriage to the flame that represented the first prophet, meaning they wanted to burn her. May didn't want to die and this was the very reason as to why she escaped. Once escaped, she was put in the care of Suzanne Mathis after not being able to find an appropriate home for her. We saw that at first, May struggled to fit in due to the fact that all of the teachings that she had were extremely different to that of a world where there's a lot more integration and the people don't worship the devil. We saw her acting a little strange in the sense that she was taking hair from Jules, Suzanne's daughter's hairbrush, did a blessing that was addressing a demon, hissed at children when she was being taken to a foster home, pulled Danny too hard when she was stretching, and also ripped up Jules' favorite t-shirt as it was one of a happy memory with her mother. One of the main things that we saw though was her creating the place where she would worship and ask for her wish to be granted, which was for her to stay in the Mathis household. You could sense that she got obsessive with Suzanne specifically, but also Jules, and eventually the family saw through the way that she was acting. I don't think she could truly help the way that she was speaking and being overly nice, but I think when an individual is like that, it can often get too much and feel forced. That and also the fact that May's family was stalking the Mathis family and were not going to let her get away with running away and were planning on taking her back so she could be sacrificed on the next full moon. This led the Dodd family to take matters into their own hands. They tried to take jewels. They burnt down the Windermere house which Suzanne's husband Peter spent their entire life savings on and they also gave Danny some candy that contained something that she was allergic to. Whilst May was growing ever popular and Jules was losing her popularity, it changed the dynamic of their once sisterly relationship. Following all of the strange occurrences, Peter wanted May to leave. This was the first time that we saw him vocalize this, and it led us to see Suzanne agree to it too, despite the fact that she'd been paying May more attention than anybody else in her family, which did ultimately cause friction between all of them. However, May heard the conversation. This then tied into the photo that we saw at the end of the series and also for May's motives to change. Rather than just wanting to stay there, it was now about staying there no matter what the cost. Whilst it seemed as though May was a changed individual, there were often these triggers that would cause her to drift back into her old mindset of being part of the cult, such as the White Roses. On the date of the Harvest Festival, which was in the finale of the show, we saw that she was handed some White Roses after being announced as the Queen. This led her to revert back to her old mindset and find a way back to Amon County where the ritual was set to take place again. As it was about to happen, we saw that the church was set on fire due to the fact that we saw that Suzanne had fought with Wilkins, the sheriff. 
We saw her take out her anger on him, and you got the impression that she was expressing what she wished that she took out on her own stepfather. We saw this with the use of flashbacks and the handcuffs and the sheriff uniform. From here, we saw Suzanne approach the platform that was burning and escape with May, leaving May's mother to be the ultimate sacrifice to Lucifer, and for her father to frame it in that way, claiming that the chain will not be broken and that they were saved. Once this was done, you could see the connection between Suzanne and May's stories, in the sense that although May was in a cult and wanted to escape from it, Suzanne's mother was in an abusive relationship, which had the restrictions of a cult, in the sense that she felt trapped and just like May, Suzanne's only way out was to run away. We were led to think that this was going to be a happy ending when we cut to a few weeks later, when it was now Thanksgiving. We witnessed dinner being prepared and it was cut in a way that it made you feel like all of the family were together. However, that wasn't the case. Peter and his three daughters were now living in the apartment that he was managing, and Suzanne was staying in the family home with May, showing that she wasn't prepared to give her up. We saw Suzanne bringing May round to the complex to drop off a dessert when we heard that they are staying separated as Peter didn't want May around the three girls, due to the damage and danger that she causes. Suzanne stated how May was making progress and we were led to believe that she was actually getting better, based on the fact that she did a blessing before food, and it was completely different to the satanic one that she did at the start of the series. However, whilst this was happening, Suzanne received a phone call from the detective who'd been working on trying to nail the Dodd family, and he saw footage that showed May planted the roses outside of the prom, so that she'd be given them as the prize, causing a fake trigger to occur, knowing that it would lead Suzanne to her family and be taken into Suzanne's care, allowing her wish to be made, showing that she hadn't made any progress at all. Her wish was granted, meaning that she isn't converted and still has the same mindset, Suzanne cared more for this young girl than she did her own family, and it was clear to see from the off. I think that's why, although she had good intentions with what she was doing, she definitely wasn't the most likable of characters. I thought this series was okay. It wasn't the best thing that I've watched before, as it felt a little too long for what it was trying to achieve. I think the story could have been told in four or six one-hour long episodes rather than eight. I also felt that there was one moment in the show that felt extremely out of place, and it was the scene with the crow. I understood the symbolism of the crow in their religion, but I didn't understand why one flew into their window. And then when Peter tried to get rid of it, this supernatural phenomenon was occurring. We never saw anything else like that in the show, so it just felt a little odd. All of the characters got a happy ending in the sense that Jules was doing what she wanted in the school paper, Peter was with his family, the detective got a promotion, and Helen was with her girlfriend. It felt like everybody did, other than Suzanne and May, who are now stuck with each other. Although that is May's version of a happy ending, the fact it's a limited series makes it even more bleaker as there won't be a season two. I also didn't think that the detective narrative was that interesting or engaging. I felt like Suzanne did a lot of the work by herself, but despite the detective cracking some of the clues, it never felt like a real revolutionary moment. The show's worth a watch, but I wouldn't go in with extremely high expectations. So, there you have it, Devil in Ohio Ending Explained. If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions, and Character Breakdowns, then click on the i button, or alternatively you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you want to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review next, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of this show? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.